Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 26th of October 2020 and the time has just gone 10.50 GMT. And it's been a fairly negative start to the European trading session. Um, we essentially have major concerns, renewed concerns uh, about the health crisis, uh, rising number of case levels in many um, European countries. Also, uh, it's it's quite a nasty looking situation uh, in in the US. Um, some states have been hit harder than others. Um, with the uh, rise in number of cases has also come tighter restrictions. Um, the most extreme example, um, the Spanish government has announced a state of emergency. Uh, we, we, we've, uh, we've already seen tighter re localized restrictions here in the UK. Same goes um, the, the, the tougher restrictions in terms of uh, curfews and whatnot uh, in the likes of France and Italy. So we have seen a kind of a, quite a, a sour shift uh, in sentiment um, in the in the last uh, comparing fr comparing Monday morning uh, with Friday. Um, things are looking reasonably really reasonably negative. Um, what's also in the mix, is, as always, um, the kind of toing and froing uh, on on the political front, both the EU UK, uh, but also on the Democrats and the Republicans in the US. Um, it's the usual story with the United States. Traders are probably growing largely skeptical that a a coronavirus relief package will be achieved between the Democrats and the Republicans before um, no, before the 3rd of November, um, which is the date of the US presidential election. Um, but of course, over the weekend, we heard from Nancy Pelosi of the Democrats that it's still possible, but we've been hearing that line for quite some time now and no and a deal has yet to be achieved. Um, on the bright side, um, the European Union's negotiating team who were supposed to depart London yesterday um, announced that they were going to be staying on in the UK and continuing talks uh, until Wednesday. So that has been seen as a positive sign. Obviously, there's no just because you're hanging around longer doesn't necessarily mean that anything is going to be greatly achieved. But it's all about the optics. If they're, if they're, if they're staying around longer, it suggests that progress has been made. Things have gotten a bit quiet on that front as well in terms of um, what both sides are saying. Uh, usually that's a sign that you know they're really getting down to business there's no guarantees but it's when you're when you're hearing on a regular basis uh individuals from both sides making statements or uh or else people uh, people close to the talks um are passing on what they've heard that's normally a sign that progress hasn't been made when it's a bit when things are a bit quieter that's often the indication that things are heading in the right direction so of all the stuff that that's going on it would seem that things are heading ever so slightly in the right direction uh, with regards to uh, the UK EU trade talks. Um, that's the kind of major topics um, of, of the markets today. Let's take a look now at the week ahead article. Uh, the, week, the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under latest news and analysis. Um, first off the bat, BP, the, uh, the major oil titan, uh, they have third quarter numbers coming out tomorrow. Uh, we also have an update from HSBC. Keep in mind, on Friday just gone, we will receive numbers from Barclays. Um, so that 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 that, that uh, really given a, a nice boost to British banking stocks uh, on Friday just gone. Uh, Whitbread, um, the owner of the, um, the the hotel crowd, they have numbers coming out tomorrow as well. Um, on Thursday, we have third quarter figures coming out from Amazon. Uh, this is going to be uh, very much in focus, one of the real benefactors of the COVID-19 crisis in that they're an online retail giant um, and their business was able to continue on uh, despite all the kind of the, the upsets and the, and the chaos caused by the pandemic. Uh, we have fourth quarter numbers coming out from Apple also on Thursday. Uh, th Thursday is also a fairly busy day because we have an interest rate decision from both the Bank of Japan and also uh, the European Central Bank. Speaking of uh, busy busy sessions, Thursday is also going to be a day when we have third quarter numbers out from Facebook. Um, the tech giant, the social media giant, uh, has obviously performed very well in terms of advertising in the last two years. Has managed to 
get a lot of eyeballs on the screen as it were in terms of its social media app and with that it's managed to successfully drag away advertising revenue revenues from traditional houses uh, and more, more towards uh, the likes of themselves um, at, at the back end of the week uh, we have an update in terms of um, quarterly results from both Lloyds and NatWest Group. NatWest Group being formerly being Rollback of Scotland. Um, also, we have UK nor mortgage approval numbers and net consumer credit uh, from uh, out on Thursday. Um, on Friday, we have the French and German and Eurozone wide uh, third quarter GDP numbers. And also, finally, we have the US spending number. So, traders will be looking at the at, at the US spending numbers and going and, and assessing are Americans going out and actually spending money. Um, so that's going to be the real gauge of consumer confidence because sometimes um, consumer confidence reports indicate indicates this, that, and the other. But ultimately, it's not about what you'd say in a survey; it's about what you actually do, and that that'll be the real kind of asset test for uh, for for the uh, for this for the for consumption in the U.S. economy. Um, for those of you who regularly follow the video, I'll, I'll do the usual run through. I'll go through the big indices, I'll go through the big currency pairs, and then I go through the big commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, the wider view, the FTSE sold off aggressively because of the pandemic, uh, February and March, rebounded from March into, um, into June. But since then, we've been in a fairly clear cut example of a downward trend whereby we've seen kind of a series of lower lows and lower highs. In fact, the lows we saw at the back end of last week and Thursday uh, was the lowest level achieved since May. So we are, you know, it is kind of quite worrying when you hit a multi-month low. So we're still very much in the kind of the wider downward trend of the past few months. If we can hold above the recent lows, we could look at heading back towards this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average. That comes into play at 5,948. If we go beyond that, we could be heading towards the psychologically important 6,000. And if you take out 6,000, we could be looking at retesting the highs of mid-October in around 6,041. But like I said, the wider tr downward trend is still very much in play. So if the market does manage to turn over on itself again, and if you do take out the recent lows, the lows of last week, which are, which are in around 5,715, if you do take out that level, it could, could take us back down towards this zone here in a 5,660, and a move below that could take us down towards 5,600. Looking at what's going on over in Germany, the DAX has been pretty hard, has been hit pretty hard today. One of its uh, one of its um, stalwarts, SAP, the um, SAP, the the, uh, the the software company, uh, basically uh, trimmed its forecast and had a major sell-off, and that that has kind of rattled the entire German market today, uh, or at least kind of added to the overall bearishness of the German market. Um, the German market enjoyed a nice rebound between, from say, from March uh, through to September. In fact, the highs it achieved in September were the highest, it, the highest level it, 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 had, it had been at, basically since the pandemic really took hold. So until, until recently, the, um, the DAX was in pretty good shape. But since September, the highs of late September didn't take out the highs in mid-September. We've had a lower low. A lower high and now another lower low so we saw how the FTSE has been in a fairly clear-cut downtrend since since June the DAX is appears to be turning over on itself uh, and seeing as we, and today's, uh, today's low has, ticked, uh, has now been the lowest level since early August we could be looking you know it would seem to me that we are um, the, the DAX is turning over on itself if you do drift lower from here Support could be found from this red line here, the 20 moving average, which comes into play at 12,126. Notice how it acted nicely as support here in, uh, in late July. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. If we do drop below the 30 moving average, the next level to keep an eye for will be 12,000. It's, it's, kind of it's a big number. And if you notice here, we did see a bit of um, support come into play or just south of it, um, that area uh, in late June. Now, keep in mind, the broader trend is to the upside. Uh, the, the, broader, the broader move for the last few months has been to the upside. So if that wider trend does continue. If you get, and if you do press on higher from here, we could head retest this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average, uh, which comes into play at 12,000, 
921. If we go beyond that, 13,000 will be the next big number to keep an eye out for. And should we retake 13,000, keep an eye out then for the highs of mid-October, which are in around 13,191. And in the interim, the immediate next potential area of resistance could be from the 130 moving average, uh, which is comes into play at 12,762. And notice on a few occasions, the market, it didn't act perfectly as, as support because it, on a few occasions it traded below, it traded through the 100-day moving average, but, but more often than not, it, on a few occasions it traded below it only to close above it yet again. So keep an eye out for the 100-day moving average should we see any rebounds on the DAX. Going across the pond to the USA, starting off with the Dow Jones, we had a decent move to the upside between uh, between late March uh, into September. In fact, the highs that were achieved in September were the highs basically since the pandemic set in, but we didn't retest the old time highs, but we got reasonably close. And since September, we've had a bit of a correction. So we've had the lower low, the lower high, the lower low, and the move higher again. And the highs that we saw in the middle of October got reasonably close to the high to the multi-month highs that were set in September, but they didn't quite get there. Uh, the market has been drifting a bit lower um, at recent yet again. We're pretty much in around this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 28,045. Uh, if you can hold above the, the 50 day moving average or you know 28,000, the kind of big number itself, it's likely that the kind of broader upward trend of the last few months is going to could continue. And if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs of mid-October in around 28,958. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the highs of early September, which are which are which were multi-month highs. Um, if we do have a break lower below the 50-day moving average here, this blue line, we could be looking at retesting this yellow line, the 100-day moving average, and that comes into play at 27,263. And notice how the, the, the 100 moving average acted nicely as support in late September. And once again, if a metric has been of importance in the past, it could be significant in the future. That was the Dow Jones. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. So when the S&P 500 had enjoyed a solid rally uh, from basically late March onwards, the highs it achieved in September were actually all time high. So it's by far it's by far the kind of the strongest market of the four major indices I've just looked at. So it, it hit a all time high in September. Then we had a pullback whereby we had a lower low, a lower high, a lower low. It has been moving higher yet again. <clears throat> Excuse me. The highs that were achieved, like with the Dow Jones, the highs that were achieved in October didn't quite retest the all time highs, but we've drifted lower again. Found that nicely from active that we, uh, it received nice support from this blue line, the 50-day moving average in at 4, 3,410. While we hold above that metric, it's likely we could see the broader uptrend continue. And should that be the case, we could be looking at targeting 3,500. A move beyond that could reach, could head, head us, head us, see us head, heading back towards the mid-October highs in around 3,549. And if you take out that, we could be looking at retesting the highs of, uh, of early September. If you do drop below the 50 moving average, this area here in around 3,341 might act as support. And if you go below that, support could come into play from this yellow line, the, the 100 day moving average. Notice how it acted nicely as support, uh, similar to the Dow Jones, it, re it received nice support um, in late September. So. It could be an area. It could be an area of uh, of future support should we see a move to the downside, and that comes into play in around three thousand three hundred and six. Um, take a look now. What's going on? The big currency pairs, starting off with the euro versus the U.S. dollar. The broader trend uh, has been to the upside. The highest that euro dollar hit in early September was actually its highest level in over two years. So it's clearly quite bullish. And then what do we see? We saw the market trade trade sideways. It had a move to the downside. So um, you know, it's not, it's not exactly a major surprise to see a correction or a pullback after you've hit a multi-year high. But since late September, what have you seen? We've seen a move, you know, a higher high, a higher low, and another higher high. So it seems 
that the kind of the broader uptrend in euro dollar is continuing. In the last few sessions, we've been holding above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, in at one spot 17.97. If we can continue to hold above that metric, we could see the kind of broader uptrend continue. And should that be the case, we could be looking heading up towards the kind of 120 zone, or just north of 120, which we saw in early September. Uh, moving to the downside, if we do have a decent break below the 50-day moving average, we could be looking at retesting the lows of mid-October in around one spot, 16.84. And a move below that could take us back down toward this area here in at one spot 1612. And if you do have a decent move below that, we could be looking heading down towards the 114 zone. But you know that that's we would need to see a fairly significant move below the uh, late September low. That's Euro dollar taking a look at pound dollar. So we talked about how Euro dollar achieved its highest level in over two years in early September. In early September, pound dollar hit its highest level in about seven, in, in about nine months. If the, the levels that were achieved here uh, were the highest since the, uh, the since December 2019, so it was, you know over an eight month high, nearly a nine month high. And then what what did we see afterwards? You know we saw a move to the downside, whereby we had a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. But since then we've been kind of pushing higher, whereby we've had a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, another higher high. In fact, only uh, last Wednesday, we hit its highest level in about six weeks. We've retreated a little since then, but but uh, if we can hold above the 130 mark, it's likely that we could see the kind of broader upward trend of the last few weeks continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at heading up towards, you know, one spot 32 or up toward this area here and at one spot 32.69. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting uh, one spot 3515 and we, the last time we saw one thir one spot 3515 was the highs of December 2019. Um, even if we do drop below one spot 30, this yellow line here, the one really moving average in at one spot 2862, that could act as support because you know we have been we have seen a few occasions uh, in the last few months where that, that we, we saw some consolidation in around that area there, uh, and that was only in September. And also it acted nicely as we saw as both support and resistance uh, in, in, um, in June and July. So keep an eye on the 100 day moving average as well. Coming now on to commodities, starting off with gold. So gold had a, ma a very bullish run uh, from March up until August. In August, it achieved an all time high. It had very quickly uh, moved lower after that all time high. So we had the the lower low, we had the lower high. It traded sideways, or at range bound for a number of for, for 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 a number of weeks, for a couple of months. Then we had another, we had a lower low. Uh, the lows of September took up the lows of uh, of August, but since then we've been broadly been pushing higher. Now it hasn't really made any aggressive move to the upside, but we have seen uh, the market push higher the last uh, in the, basically uh, since late September in the last few weeks. Notice how it's made it's. Um, it's it's failed uh, on um, to break above the 50-day moving average. This blue line here in at one spot, uh, sorry, 1921. Um, if we do press on higher from here and we retake 1921, we could then be looking at heading it back up toward the highs of mid-September in at 1973. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at the kind of psychologically important 2000 mark. And then if we go beyond 2000, we could then be looking at heading up towards. Uh, we, could, we could be heading towards the highs of uh, mid-October, so mid-October, mid-August, in at uh, 2015. Um, notice how the 50-day moving average acted nicely as support um, back in June, so and on yet again uh, in September. So this could be we, we could be approaching a fairly significant metric, but at the same time. It's also possible that we could approach the 50 moving average and then turn over on ourselves yet again. And should that be the case, and should we drop back below 1900, we could look heading back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, and that comes into play in at 1883. And a move below that could take us back down towards the lows of late September in at 1848. And a decent break below that could take us back down towards 1800. Lastly, now taking a look at all the oil contract, the oil market. Start looking at Brent crude oil December contract. So, the you know 
the moves you see in oil tend often tend to be um, connected to the perception about the health of the global economy and global demand. So oil had a, had a major re rebound uh, from from April into August. Uh, the highs that it achieved in August were the highest ever it's achieved basically since March, when the kind of pandemic was really at its height. And since then, kind of like stock markets, we we have seen a bit of have seen it come under pressure. You know, we've seen the lower low, the lower high, another lower low. The market rebounded uh, in the kind of middle of October, but notice how it failed to get above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and it's been actually nudging lower the last few sessions. And in fact, today uh, it's fell back to a level last seen in the first of in the first since the since the uh, since early since early October. So we're back now, kind of multi week lows um, on, uh, on on Brent crude oil. If we do press on lower from here. We could look at retesting the lows of early October in at 38 spot 79. And if we go below that, we could be looking at heading down toward this area here in around $36 a barrel. Uh, on the flip side, if the kind of broader upward trend does continue, we'd first need to kind of take out this, this blue line here, the 50 day moving average in at 43 spot 01. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the kind of 44 area. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards the 46 zone and then the kind of highs that were achieved in August itself. That's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good training week and good luck.